Pipeline Industries Guild, and I'd like to welcome you all to this uh, webinar, which is going to be presented by Luke Parar of um, Decotech. Um, the presentation is about tape coatings, and we'll be getting an insight into the, um, the different um, manufacturing uh, technologies and how these impact on the material properties of the tape coatings and, uh, and, and how uh, that affects the importance of the long-term durability of field joint coatings. As I mentioned earlier, we, we will have a question and answer session at, at, at the end of the webinar. And if you have any questions, can you use the, the chat function and then I'll host that Q&A session at the end. So um, I'd now like to hand over to Luke to start his uh, presentation on tape coatings. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Norman. Uh, I hope everybody can uh, hear me properly. Uh, I'm very happy to give you this presentation. So the subject today we will discuss the manufacturing technologies of uh, tape coatings and we will see together how those manufacturing technologies has an impact on the material properties on long term but also on short terms. Uh, I already presented this uh, presentation in August uh, so if you attend for the second time it is the same presentation uh, that compared to what has been presented in August uh, last August. So the agenda of the presentation is as follows. We will first have a small introduction. We will discuss and explain what is the difference between a lamination process, manufacturing process, and a co-extrusion manufacturing process. I will then explain what is the main differences between a three-ply tape system and a two-ply tape system. I will explain much more into details what is a co-extrudic and asymmetrical three-ply tape system. Then we will have a comparison of material properties, taking into account the three chapters above. We will also describe a simply test that you can do on your own in your office to make sure a tape is being co-extruded or laminated. I will share with you some long-term experiences from the field with uh, co-extruded three-ply tapes. And uh, we, will finish, uh, we will finish with some conclusion. So as an introduction, there are different types of material, uh, different tapes on the market. Uh, tapes can be different in, different in various aspects. One of the most important aspects, and this is what we will talk about today, is the production technology, how it is manufactured. It can be laminated or it can be co-extruded. So we will go back into this uh, the subject much more into details. What is also important uh, for a tape is the material which is used to manufacture the tape. Uh, typically two type of material are uh, used. Uh, can be PVC and bitumen or it can be polyethylene and butyl rubber. The structure of the tape is also important. Uh, we have a two-ply tape or a three-ply tape. So a two-ply tape has two layers of materials and a three-ply tape has three layers of material. We talk about the, compos the composition. Uh, it can be symmetrical. It means that the thickness of uh, the two layer uh, adhesive anti-corrosion material are the same, or it can be asymmetrical with different thicknesses. We will also discuss more into details those two differences uh, during the presentation. So we can conclude easily by just going through those different aspects that a tape is not a tape, is not the same. You cannot uh, claim that every tape are as the same behavior uh, we have the same uh, properties on short terms and long terms. All tapes are different. And this presentation will help you to better understand what makes the difference. So the question we would like to you to, uh, to answer after and during the presentation is the first one, 
are the, the different tape structure and the production technology, do they have an impact on the quality of the material and the properties of the material? You will understand that the answer is yes. And the second question is, okay, but what exactly will be influence? What impact exactly uh, uh, will the, the manufacturing process or the technology which is used, what will be the impact on the long-term behavior of a, coating, a tape coating system? So let's start with the first uh, explanation, the first main chapter, explaining, understanding what is the difference between lamination and co-extrusion to manufacture a tape. So the objective of manu manufacturing a tape is to put together different layers of material. So typically we have one layer, which is what we call a carrier film. And if we have a three-ply tape system, we have two layers, which is symbolized here in blue colors. We have two layers of uh, adhesive, which is the anti-corrosion material. And to put all those material together to make one tape, uh, we could have used a glue. But the industry is not using the glue. The industry is using two different uh, possible manufacturing process. One is the lamination of the, the material together. And the other one is the co-extrusion of the material together. So what is lamination? It exists three typical technologies, but in all technologies, there is at least one layer of material which has been cooled down and it's then covered with one or two other layers of, uh, of soft or, or streaming material. So example, the three technologies are as follow. So you can extrude one layer on a solid uh, film layer. Another technology is to press, to eat first and press cold solid films together, as represented here in, in this drawing. And the last uh, typical uh, way to manufacture with a lamination process is to apply a liquid uh, on a solid film. So the liquid is blue on this picture and the solid film here is, uh, is, is white. So the principle of co-extrusion is, total, is different. In, is different in the way that all the layers, all the materials are melt and they stream together. So each melt streams is produced by its own extruder. If we talk about a real co-extrusion process, the melt streams flow into a common die through different channels. So we make here a small drawing to make it more understandable. You have three different channels. Each channel produce ex, extrude his own material. The material, the three materials are flowing inside a common die. And inside the common die, the materials come together and start to link to each other to make one single layer, one single material, which is made up of three different materials. So three, two, uh, sorry, two layers of adhesive and one layer, which is the carrier, the carrier film, if we talk about, in this case, a three-ply tape system. So the principle of real co-extrusion, that we have a, a material, which is the polymers, are flowing into the common die, and into the common die, the materials are intermingling together. So I try to symbolize and explain this phenomena inside the common die through uh, this drawing. So you can see here the different flow of material entering the common die. Inside the common die, the materials start to, uh, to link to each other. And at the outside of the common die, the material are strongly linked to each other. If you look at some sections uh, with a microscope, uh, this is typically what you could see. Uh, you can see at the border between two layers of material, 
that the material has been interlinking, interlinked uh, into each other. We talk about uh, a welding of the component. So it's a very strong chemical bond between the different layers of material inside the same tape system. So co-extrusion, if we, if we look a little bit more about some details of co-extrusion, it's, uh, it's a process which is not so easy to, uh, to, to manage. Uh, it requires a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience. So uh, for, for Decatech, for example, it took, it took many years to, uh, to be able to manage all the process properly. So the process technology, uh, the melting properties of the material, some, let's say, secret receipts, all those things need to fit together to be able to manufacture a high quality tape. So the, one of the most challenge uh, is to, to make sure that um, in the entire width of the tape, and this is here symbolized by the width of the tape, uh, we have the same speed, the same velocity of material everywhere in order to be able to have the exact correct thickness of material on the entire width of, of, the, of the tape. So a real co-extrusion is using like a cold anger manifold for each component. And this cold anger manifold, which is here symbolized by this drawing, make sure that you have an equal pressure lost on every, uh, every location of the width of the tape with exactly the material, the quantity of material which is needed to make a, quali a high quality tape. Uh, the machine uh, here on the right hand side below uh, gives you an example of a typical co-extrusion machine. So you can see it's, it's, uh, it's quite a high technology. So knowing now the process, there are, there are some properties which, which are, uh, with, that we can, we can deduct from, from, from the manufacturing process. If we understand now the difference between the manufacturing processes, so using a, a real co-extrusion uh, will, will ensure a higher superior layer to layer adhesion between different tapes layer. Uh, it will also ensure a higher lap shear resistance. So in fact, the, 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 the layers cannot move uh, on each other. And finally, uh, the elongation at break is one of the way to test the quality of the material at the end of the production, if the elongation at break is poor, it means that the co-extrusion process was not managed properly or was not controlled properly. So a real co-extruded tapes is a high quality tape. Now let's go to the next chapter and let's understand what is the difference, the main difference between a three-ply tape system and a two-ply tape. So a three-ply tape is, as I previously said, is, is, is made up of three different materials. So typically one material, the black one here is a carrier film, can be PVC or polyethylene. And we have two layers of adhesive, which is anti-corrosion material, which is typically for a three-ply tape system is butyl rubber. So the structure is one carrier film, covered on both sides with adhesive. The material used as an adhesive for three-ply tape system is butyl rubber only. And this kind of structure can be manufactured by lamination or co-extrusion. If we look now at a two-ply tape system, so we have typically the carrier film, but we have only one layer of adhesive which can be butyl rubber or bitumen. So we have carrier film. We have the carrier film, which is covered only on one side. The adhesive can be butyl rubber or bitumen. If we have butyl rubber, the manufacturing process to produce this kind of tape can be lamination or co-extrusion. But if the uh, adhesive layer, anti-corrosion layer is bitumen, we cannot co-extrude it only lamination is possible. 
So the characteristics of butyl rubber. It's interesting to understand why butyl rubber has been used as anti-corrosion material. It has a high ability to flow to a certain degree. So it will, it will fill in whole cavities of the steel uh, to protect. But the most important, one of the most important uh, property of butyl rubber is the fact that butyl rubber layers self algamate without any heat, just with time. So if we consider two layers, for example, in this uh, representation, if we, if we represent one layer of uh, butyl rubber and we put this, la this layer together with another layer of butyl rubber, so one is in black, one, the other one is, is in yellow, we put those two layers one against the other, with time, the two layers, the, the material, the molecule, will start to migrate from one side to the other and also in the opposite way. And after a certain period of time, we will have one, one single material, one single component, which is a mixture of the two original components. So this is an example, uh, a section of, uh, of butyl rubber tapes. Uh, this is a carrier film, the black lines, and between the two black lines, there was two layers of butyl rubber, and with time, the two, layer, uh, the two layers amalgamate uh, and form, they form just one single layer. So now that we understood the uh, two ply tape system and how it is, it is manufactured, uh, we can ask the question, is it, is it the best solution for corrosion pr protection? So when you apply a two ply tape system, we typically come to uh, such, uh, such a situation. So we have the butyl rubber or the bitumen, which is applied at the overlap area between the two layers of tape. The bonding between the two layers can be weak. And in most of the time it is weak because it is applied on the field. It's a bonding which is uh, secured on the field and not in the manufacturing process. So we have at this interface, we have a micro channel. And this micro channel with time is a good path for moisture and oxygen. So, and uh, th this is to symbolize uh, the path and the leak of adhesion between two layers of a two ply tape system. And in addition of this, what we typically see with a two layer, a two ply tape system is at the overlap transition area between the two layers of, of, of tape, we have a high risk of creation of hollows. So in this area, we can have the formation of what we call a spiral, a spiral corrosion. So let's have a look how it looks like uh, when we look at uh, tapes, two-ply tape system applies on the field after a couple of, of years in service. So this was a pipeline coated with polyethylene uh, tapes, two-ply, and you can see the spiral uh, pitting corrosion here uh, around the pipe. Uh, this was another tape system, a mesh back coating system, and you can see the overlap area is just at the same place where the corrosion started to appear, where the spiral corrosion started to appear. If we look at the tree ply tape system, it's a much reliable system, much stronger system against corrosion prevention. So let's take the example of a tree ply tape system, uh, which is in this case a asymmetric system. So we have much more butyl rubber on the other si underside of the carrier film and much less uh, butyl rubber on the top side of the carrier film. So what's happened is when the two tapes uh, are, are placed against each other, the two layers of butyl rubber in this, in this area start to self amalgamate. And so the micromolecules here in this area migrate to each uh, layer. And we have in this area a very strong bond making of the whole system like an impermeable hose type coating which stop any 
migration of oxygen of water uh, to uh, to the steel so there is no interface there is no hollow and there is no micro channel so with a three ply tape system in many many situations there is no spiral corrosion let's now have a look and understanding of a three ply tape system co extruded and asymmetrical so how to manufacture a co extruded asymmetrical three ply tape system the first step is the co extrusion the co extrusion exactly the same way i explained previously so we have one carrier film we have the co extrusion on the, of one layer of butyl rubber on the top of the uh, carrier film and we have on the same at the same time the co extrusion of what we call an intermediate butyl rubber layer at the bottom of the carrier film after this process the second step consists to add butyl rubber at the bottom of the, the the tape system so we can add the thickness that we want uh, depending on the requirements of the project the requirements from the customer uh, the preparation of the steel uh, and, and those things so what happens the butyl rubber is put together against the co-extruded layer and start to amalgamate with the co-extruded layer and after a certain time the the bond between the two layers disappeared and makes only one layer of one single material so co-extrusion we have a very strong bond what we call a chemical bond between the butyl rubber and the carrier film which is polyethylene and also we have a strong bond amalgamation between the additional butyl rubber and the uh, co-extruded butyl rubber layer so this line disappear and if we look at uh, again a microscopic uh, section uh, we can see that the material has uh, penetrated into each other to make a very strong bond between the carrier film and the butyl rubber if you look at the lamination process so here in the lamination process we have only a mechanical bond between the butyl rubber and the carrier film uh, there is no penetration in this area there is no penetration of micromolecule between the different layers so which means that after aging the long-term properties of the material are significantly reduced and you will understand uh, some of those with the, 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 the coming slides uh, of this presentation so why so you can see that in this uh, system co-extruded the system is asymmetric which means that the thickness of the, the anti-corrosion material the butyl rubber at the bottom of the carrier film is much higher compared to the thickness of uh, the butyl rubber on the top of the carrier film if we talk about a symmetrical system the thickness are the same top and the bottom of the carrier film so why do we talk about asymmetrical what is it an interest what is the, the interest of having such a system typically we need to cover a steel which is in most of the situations uh, prepare grid blasted uh, according to SA 2.5 which is the most commonly used standard the tape is applied with typically a first layer and a second layer on the top of it so the thickness the thickness of anti-corrosion material butyl rubber is much thicker at the bottom and is typically about two times the thickness of butyl rubber anti-corrosion material which is used when a symmetrical system is used when a symmetrical system is used much less material anti-corrosion material is in direct contact with the contact sorry with the steel to protect so what does that mean there is some risk 
to have some peaks non-protected. And there is also some, there are also some risk to have unprotected hollows. So that's the reason why asymmetrical system provide guarantee higher, better steel coverage. So if you look at and we summarize a tree ply tape system, co-extruded and asymmetrical, we can summarize as follow. It has a very strong bond between the carrier film and the two layers of butyl rubber. It has also a very strong bond between the layers, the different, the two layers of butyl rubber after application uh, of the two layers of tape, because those two layers amalgamate uh, each other. And at the top of it, we have the best steel coverage due to the higher thickness of material applied directly in contact with the steel to protect. So, this combination is by far a favorite combination in terms of corrosion prevention. Now let's have a look to uh, some uh, technical material properties and compare those uh, properties. So the first uh, comparison we would like to, uh, to do here is to compare the layer to layer adhesion. You know, those tapes are typically applied with 50% overlap, which means that one layer of tape is applied on the top of each other as it is represented in this uh, drawing. Doing a layer to layer test means that one uh, layer is pulled off in one direction and the other uh, layer is pulled off in the opposite direction. So, what happened in a co extruded uh, tape system? The break appear only as a cohesive failure inside the butyl rubber. It's a very strong point. There is no delamination between, uh, between the, the carrier film and the butyl rubber. If you look what happened with the laminated uh, tape system, we do the same, we apply the force at the opposite way, uh, like represented on this drawing. But what happened typically, is that there is a high risk of delamination at this, uh, in this area, so between the carrier film and uh, the butyl rubber, because it's not co-extruded like here, so it, it breaks much more easily. So typically, when we do a layer-to-layer -layer test with a co-extruded material, co-extruded tape, we have as a minimum about two times, sometimes three times, the values required by relevant standards like EN or ISO standards. When we do the same test according with a laminated tape, according to EN and or e, e, ISO standard, we have, we just meet the value, we just meet the requirement, but we do not certainly have two or three times the required value. So let's, let's have the same, uh, let's take an example. Let's take an example. Uh, this is a three ply co extruded uh, three ply tape system, butyl rubber polyethylene. Uh, the, 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 the two tapes has been uh, pulled from each other uh, exactly as, as explained before. So the forces was applied in those two opposite directions. And the failure was only uh, at the interface between the two butyl rubber. Uh, it's a full cohesive failure mode inside the butyl rubber. And the force to uh, to, to, which needs to be applied to pull uh, the, two, the, two, the two tapes uh, to, uh, out of together was so strong that the polyethylene started to elongate. And if we compare this with another test which has been conducted on a two-ply laminated bitumen PVC tape, we have clearly a very large delamination uh, of the bitumen from the carrier film. So we have uh, a clear adhesive failure uh, when we do the test. So we have a much, much lower value in this scenario. Let's look at uh, another very important uh, property, uh, the lap shear resistance. So lap shear resistance is in fact uh, applying a force which is uh, horizontal from each other, 
one in one side and the other in the opposite side. The lap shear is very important because uh, the coating, the, the coating system will must fight during in its entire life against those forces. So when we have a co-extruded uh, tape system, uh, we have a very strong bond uh, between all the layers and we do not see any delamination. So we have a very high uh, uh, shear resistance, lap shear resistance. If we do the same with a laminated tape, we have typically this kind of result with a delamination in this area uh, during the test. And because it delaminates in this area, we have uh, this part of the first layer, which is not protected anymore. There is no two layers uh, on the top of each other anymore. So we reduce significantly the corrosion protection uh, at this area. So there is a risk, even a high risk of delamination, uh, and especially after aging, because after time, uh, this uh, bond between uh, the carrier film and uh, the, the butyl rubber is, is decreasing uh, with the years, with the decades, is de decreasing significantly. If we do the, the same comparison with, again, a three-ply co tape system, uh, we do not have any delamination in this case. Uh, we compare this with a two-ply tape system. So we have two big issues. If a soft adhesive is used, like for example, bitumen, yeah, then you will have here a large displacement of the two tapes. And in addition of this, you will have a very high risk of delamination in this area and a significant risk of delamination in this area. So we have really a high, very high, uh, a significant high risk of delamination when using a two-ply laminated tape. And this is probably one of the reasons that some markets, and I'm thinking about uh, North America, uh, they cancel, they, they, they stop uh, in the oil and gas industry, they stop any use of, of tapes, of, uh, of, of polymeric tapes uh, for, for uh, I think about 30 or 35 years ago. And the reason is mainly because only two, two ply laminated tape uh, was used at that time. The three-ply co-extruded technology did not exist. So that was the reason why the North American market rejected uh, the use of tapes. So uh, 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 a poor lap shear resistance uh, means, in fact, a poor soil stress resistance. So this is illustrated by those two uh, pictures. Uh, this is typical performance that you can see after aging when using laminated two-ply tapes. You will, if the diameter is a quite large diameter, as it is the case on this picture, it's a pipeline uh, which was rehabilitated in, in Croatia. Uh, you can see that wrinkles appear on the entire circumferences of the pipe, while when the pipe diameter is smaller, uh, the wrinkles mainly appear at the four o'clock and eight o'clock position because this is this area where the pressure of the soil is, is the highest. So let's have a general overview, like a, a summary a summarize of the different main properties of the different technologies. So the long-term performance, aging, and an aging test can be uh, 100 days in an oven, uh, can be a hot water immersion, uh, after uh, 30 days or 28 days, but uh, some companies I requested uh, 100 days in hot water. Some of them are also requesting uh, six months in hot water. So when using a three-ply co-extruded tape, the performance uh, on long term are high. When using a laminated tape, they are quite low. If we look at the layer-to-layer -layer adhesion, a real co-extruded three-ply tape will uh, ensure results which are much higher than the requirement from uh, standards like EN and ISO standard. When using a three-ply tape system but laminated, just, it will just meet the requirement of the EN and ISO. When using a two-ply tape system, it's poor. It doesn't meet any requirement from EN or ISO standard. The failure mode to layer, the, during layer to layer 
is purely cohesive when real co-extrusion is used. It is adhesive cohesive for the triplight tape system laminated, and it is fully adhesive when it is a two-ply tape system laminated. Another important uh, property, so the lap shear resistance, again, using a real co-extruded triplight tape gives a much higher result compared to the requirement of EN and ISO. We are, about, we are about two times, sometimes three times above the required value, while the laminated triply tapes just meet the requirement of EN and ISO, and a two-ply tape system does not meet at all uh, the requirement of the ISO. I've seen uh, performance of some PVC bitumen tapes uh, meeting about 10% uh, only of the requirement of the EN and ISO in uh, lap shear resistance. The risk of spiral corrosion is very low with uh, real co-extrusion. I would even say does not exist. While it is quite low when a triply tape is used uh, but laminated, but it's very high uh, when it is laminated uh, two-ply tape system. Uh, you understand that the equal thickness of the material on the entire width of the tape uh, is also important. Uh, it's perfectly uniform when co-extrusion is used. It is less uniform when it is laminated, whatever the technology is, three-ply or two-ply. The steel coverage is excellent with a three-ply co-extruded asymmetrical system. We can adjust the thickness of a butyl rubber according to the specific uh, requirements of the project. It is much more limited when using uh, lamination technology. Another uh, relevant, important, uh, I think, um, property, of, especially for the UK, is the flexibility at low temperature. Um, because of its manufacturing process and the, so the, the co extrusion and the material used uh, for real co extruded three ply tapes, so the material is polyethylene and butyl rubber, the flexibility at, at low temperature is excellent while it is much less even poor for a laminated product. Uh, and it is very poor if uh, bitumen or PVC is used. Those materials are not flexible at all at low temperature. So sometimes uh, I've seen contractors, they need, they really need to keep uh, the material in, in the car or in the van, uh, which is not convenient when working on the field. Uh, you must go back and forward uh, to the van uh, to make sure take the tape the roll uh, uh, just just before application so let's let's have a look on how to simply test uh, co-extrusion or lamination process uh, there is no need uh, to to go to a laboratory or to make a big study uh, it's a very simple test that everybody can conduct uh, in his own office. Um, so the test is called petrol, petrol immersion test. So the idea is to immerse in petrol a two-ply or a three-ply tape for a minimum of two hours. So it looks like this. Uh, this is a cup of, uh, of petrol. Uh, it's not a, it, it is the same size as a cup of tea. It's a small plastic container uh, which is filled with uh, petrol and a small sample of tape uh, has been immersed in each uh, cap. And after a minimum two hours of waiting, uh, the, the sample is assessed. So uh, you remove the sample from the petrol and you try to remove the residual thickness of butyl rubber, if any. And if this residual thickness can be easily removed with like here, a very small spatula, uh, leaving a carrier film uh, as a smooth and glossy surface. Uh, it's clearly a lamination process. Um, so the adhesive, the residual adhesive is easy to remove. So it's a lamination process. On the other hand, if the residual adhesive is very difficult to remove, uh, still strongly bond to the polyethylene uh, carrier film, 
and you need to use strong mechanical device to remove it, like a sizzle or a, mark, uh, a hammer, uh, then you can conclude, oh yeah, that is a co-extruded uh, tape. So everybody can conduct this tape, and I would recommend you to do it, especially for the pipelines operators. Uh, I've seen some manufacturer pretending on data sheets that the product has been co-extruded. Uh, and this simple test demonstrated the opposite. And also the, the values, layer to layer adhesion and lap shear resistance from the data sheet also immediately demonstrate that this tape cannot be co-extruded. It is simply laminated. I would like to finally share with you some uh, long-term experience. So you know, Decotec is a German company and our three ply tapes uh, are called beauty lane tapes. Uh, and uh, Decotec was probably the first of one of the first uh, coating manufacturers developing co-extruded three ply tapes using polyethylene and butyl rubber. So this is just an example from, uh, from the field. So the company Energinet Bayern, uh, which is a German company, obviously. Um, so they, they have a, a network of 9,500 kilometers pipeline. And one of the pipe between those two cities has been constructed and commissioning in 1976. The, the field joint coatings uh, used was a beauty lane three ply real co extruded uh, PE butyl rubber tapes. Uh, after 39 years in operation, uh, the pipe has been excavated on a certain section, and uh, the, the, some pieces of the pipes uh, protected by the, the, the tapes has been assessed in laboratories, and this after 39 years. So first of all, there was no failure of the coating, so no wrinkles uh, as, as it, this happened with a two-ply tape system. And under the, the tape, there was no corrosion at all. It has been also uh, peeled, so adhesion test has been conducted according to EN or ISO standard and they got values at a minimum of 1.8 Newton by millimeter with a nice cohesive break. You can see the cohesive break here on this picture. So the value was about two times the requirements of standards like EN or even ISO standard. Another example is uh, the company Gascade, uh, gas transport. Uh, they have a network of large diameter pipelines and uh, a 36 inch pipe uh, called Stiegel has been constructed in 1992 uh, using the same beauty lane three ply co extruded tapes. And after 20 years of uh, operation, so in 2012, the pipe has been excavated, the field joints has been assessed. And again, there was no corrosion and no failure at all to all the joints which has been um, examined, and which is very impressive. Uh, the adhesion was so strong that a value of 6.4 Newton was measured at different locations. Uh, when you compare this with the requirements from standards like EN or ISO, it's only one Newton. And this is for a new fresh coating, not for coating aging after 20 years in the soil. So the beauty lane three ply co extruded tape give six times more adhesion than a brand new tape uh, as required by a standard. At the ad in addition of that, the cohesive break uh, of, the, of the beauty rubber was tested by measuring the residual thickness of butyl rubber still sticking on the steel surface after peel test. And in this uh, picture, you can see that the residual thickness of butyl rubber after peel test was 344 microns. So it demonstrates a very strong cohesive break of the butyl rubber, which is exactly 
what we want to see when we do a peel test. So let's conclude, uh, which is uh, repeating what we, what we discussed uh, during this presentation. Uh, so the self amalgamation of the butyl rubber uh, and the three ply system, you understand now why I give you an impermeable house type coating. So there is no humidity or oxygen uh, possible to penetrate it uh, through the coating and, and reach the steel. So there is no spiral corrosion as it is uh, the case in many, many situations with two ply laminated tapes. It has the best steel coverage. The thickness of butyl rubber anti-corrosion material can be designed to make sure all the peaks and the valleys are properly covered and protected. It has a much higher layer to layer uh, adhesion with a cohesive failure break inside the butyl rubber. Uh, typical value layer to layer adhesion is minimum two times the value uh, required by the standard. Uh, it has a much higher lap shear resistance, which means a far superior soil stress resistance. So there is no wrinkle when using uh, a three ply co extruded uh, tape. It has an excellent long term expectancy. It has been proven by field experience and proven by many test reports uh, conducted by relevant laboratories, like everybody knows, I guess. DVGW laboratory, um, uh, independent and located in Germany. And for, as far as we know, uh, there is no other tape system which has uh, a longer proven track record in the field. So the structure, uh, the structure of the tape, the three ply tape gives ensure a hose like coating while a two-ply tape system increase the risk of failure, increase the risk of corrosion, specifically the spiral corrosion we discussed before. The material. The material was not the subject of this presentation, but you can imagine that using different material has also a significant influence of, on the properties of the coating system. So we will discuss in another presentation, which is planned well, within two weeks from now, I think it's the 20th of October, so this, on Tuesday, exactly the same time, at 12 o'clock, we will discuss, we will present much more into detail the details and the comparison between polyethylene butyl rubber and PVC and bitumen. And hopefully, it will help you to understand that butyl rubber is superior compared to PVC bitumen, and it will understand to help you to understand why it has it is so successful uh, with very nice reference in, in the field for many decades. The production technology matter that was the main purpose of this presentation. You understand that real co extrusion is a superior production technology, and then lamination uh, manufacturing technologies uh, has a much higher risk to fail. Uh, specifically if we look on the long-term uh, performance. So thank you so much for uh, your uh, attention. Uh, I, I hope it was clear enough and I'm ready to answer to eventual questions. Norman? Okay, right. Thank you very much. Um, it's, uh, it was a really, um, really interesting presentation. Um, we've just time really for a, a couple of questions. Um, somebody's actually given an answer to the first one, but I, I'll just say uh, the first question is how how long do two layers of butyl rubber take to become cohesive? Um, so I guess the question is how, how long it takes uh, to have two layers of butyl, butyl, butyl rubber to amalgamate uh, yeah, that's each it, other. Yeah. I guess this is the question. Yeah. Like many, many, many answers of this kind of question, the, the typical answer is will be, it depends. <laughs> 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 but uh, I would say, uh, uh, it can be 
typically it, it should be a couple of days to have full full amalgamation of the two material the two layers uh, into each other uh, this is one of the reasons why uh, when we do testing uh, we are waiting uh, two three days before doing layer to layer adhesion before doing lab shear test resistance or a peel strain resistance just to make sure that the amalgamation process is uh, fully uh, fully finished but i've also demonstrated myself uh, amalgam amalgamation uh, process um, after uh, after one hour of presentation so typically i take two pieces of tape i put them together i give the presentation during 45 minutes like now and then I come back on the two on the two tapes which were uh, put together one hour before, and I try just try to disband them. I can tell you it's impossible. Right. Amalgamation was already so strong that I could not remove the two tapes from each other. Right. Yeah, yeah. but typically, you know, the the, the butyl rubber uh, chemistry has an influence, but mm. like every coating, the temperature has an influence. If it is warmer, yes, the process is faster. If it is cold, it slows down the process. Okay. But it's not, it's, we are not talking about a couple of weeks or a couple of years. It is typically a couple of days, two, three days. Then you have full amalgamation. Okay, th thank you, Luke. Um, I've got a question from uh, Mark Hunter. And he, he asks, uh, please advise what specification or manufacturer guidance uh, exists uh, for the tape application and in particular he's looking at the level of tape overlap and also how the tape should be applied to say more complex shape fittings such as T pieces, bends and, and brass. Yeah. Yes, so we, we have like any uh, manufacturer we have uh, what we call a document which is called application recommendation which explain with pictures every single step of application to make sure uh, application is, is, is conducted fully according to all our requirements. Um, now, looking at special shapes, uh, typically, uh, if you look at the flange, for example, uh, other technologies are, are, are used as well for, for flanges. We can use mastic, for example. Uh, we can use also a liquid coating, a polyurethane coating, which is more appropriated to flange. So I would say typically the three-ply, uh, the three-ply co-extruded tape is mainly used, mainly uh, when used as a field joint coating yeah. uh, to cover uh, the, the, the joint, the welding joint between two pipe sections for new pipes. And is also typically used to rehabilitate it, uh, existing pipeline. When a pipeline needs to be excavated, the old coating is removed, can be 10 meters, can be 10 kilometers, uh, and then a new coating is applied on the steel. Uh, that's also a typical application where, when this technology is used. Don't say a three-ply tape co-extruded uh, cannot be used for a flange or for a T. It is used, but this has been uh, studied case by case because it's not, uh, it's not 100% uh, this kind of application that the team has been designed for from the very beginning. Okay. So uh, just one final question from me, actually, and uh, it, it's um, you, you've explained, you know, about this tape being used on uh, steel pipes, but can it be used on on pipes of other other uh, construction, such as duct pile iron or, or or even cast iron? Uh, it is used uh, in the water industry on uh, ductile iron pipe. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, we have for those pipes, um, in fact, the, the chemistry, the manufacturing process, the co-extrusion, everything is the same. Right. Uh, typically, what is slightly different is the thicknesses of the different material, mm -hmm. uh, the thickness of the carrier film and the thickness of the under layer, which is in direct contact with the steel. Mm -hmm. and this is the reason why it is asymmetric more thickness on the bottom of the tape uh, but we have one tape which is more dedicated for ductile iron pipeline and uh, i mean the, the properties are pretty much the same 
uh, adhesion uh, is, 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 is the same as, as, as carbon steel. Uh, there is no significant difference, but it's exactly the same technology and it fits perfectly for other um, uh, metals. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Luke, for your, for, for your answers. Um, and I'd also like to thank everybody who has attended the, um, uh, the webinar today. Um, I'd just finally like to remind you that we are continuing our webinar program. Our next, um, uh, our next uh, webinar is on Thursday. It's on uh, AI inspection of uh, PE pipes by, given by Luke, uh, Wes Little of uh, Control Point. And then next um, Tuesday, we have a webinar on the development of uh, consent orders for, for, uh, for pipelines, which should be given by Mark uh, Gillies of Fisher German and Claire Broderick of Pinson Mason. So again, uh, thank, thanks again, Luke, for your presentation and thanks for everybody attending. And I'll close the webinar now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Norman. Thank you so much. Bye. Yeah.